Hey everyone, it's Pastor Kelly coming at you with a little Bible study. I've been promising this for quite a while, and I'm going to see what I can do about getting it to you. So many people anymore are worried about the end of the world, and uh, thus the signs are there uh, that uh, our dear Lord Jesus is close at hand. And that's not a bad thing. You should fear not. If you're a saved Christian, you shouldn't fear it at all if you have Christ in your heart. You should be happy and rejoice that, you know, you're getting ready to spend eternity in heaven with our Lord and Savior, the man who gave all, the man who, the, the God who loves you. We're going to start out with uh, Matthew 24 and verses 36 to 38. It says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in those days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. Test one, two, test, test one, two. Okay, we're going to jump down and back to Genesis chapter 6 and just see exactly what the Lord meant when it was the Lord Jesus that said that. What he meant about when the times of Noah. Genesis chapter 6, verse 2 says that the sons of God, that'd be angels, if you don't know what that means, saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them for wives, all of which they chose, which, you know, God did not want his angels mixing with his favorite creation, which is man. Angels, of course, was his third favorite creation, and, uh, of course, we know that's what made Lucifer mad, because God loves us more than he does the angels. The Bible tells us even that in the end times or in heaven, we'll be ordering angels around. We'll be the boss of angels, which, you know, that's going to be kind of different, but the Lord commands it, and that's what we'll do. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Now, until this time, yeah, Methuselah and all them, you know, living eight, nine hundred years, whatever. What, what it, what it is, is it made God mad, and He cut our age down. He cut us down to where we are now, and there's a time, and well, actually, we're less than 120 years now, obviously, but uh, He cut it back. That's how mad He made Him. It says there there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that there was the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they were bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Those were the offspring of the angels mating with women. Yes, it happened. It's in the Bible. If you believe the Bible, which I do, 150,000%, it did happen. Here's the problem with that. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only of evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. The Lord was sorry that he even made us at that time because of all the wickedness and the evil that was going on. And the Lord said, I will destroy man who I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for I repenteth me that I have made them. I'm sorry that I even made them. This is how bad it was getting before the flood. And then I go on here. It goes on to... Verse 11 says, <clears throat> The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. 
And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now, everybody's always, you hear it all the time on videos and pastors and preachers and reverends and whatever, and they, they'll speak of Matthew 24, and they always refer to uh, that verse as, as it being the time of Noah, I do, I do myself. And folks, a lot of you folks out there don't really know your Bible, and they don't really know, you don't really know what the Lord was speaking about, and I thought I would make this video and talk about it a bit. That's what he was speaking about. Now, all that things that I read you, all that fornication, all that lying, all that cheating, all that mixing up and wars and fighting amongst each other's selves and stabbing in the back, everything you see coming to pass today, Everything is what we are seeing was the times of Noah. And and if you look at your Bible in Matthew, go back with me to Matthew 24, verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And we know the Son of Man, obviously, is Jesus Christ. For as the days that there were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. They didn't have a clue what was getting ready to happen. Folks, at that time, there was eight people that knew that even had an inkling, and Noah had to convince a couple of them, and they was his kids. Eight people out of the whole world knew what was getting ready to come down because they had no, they were they were living in bliss like most people are now. A sound bite, just like this video I'm making now. Uh, most, if anybody made it this far, I'll be surprised. The average view rate of a video is like one and a half minutes. It loses your attention going to the next. It used to be things blow up or people get shot or mass shootings. It's just oh, that's terrible. Sending prayers, all of the, all of the above, and oh, oh, look at the puppies. Isn't that a pretty picture of a balloon? They just go on. People are oblivious because they're living in the now. They live in the now. There's no past. There's no future. It's now. What's good for now? What's good for me? And that's exactly what the Lord is describing in this chapter. Is exactly what was described in Genesis 6 of how the world was before. So if you add those two things together, 2 plus 2 be 4, the Lord's telling you to look, to watch for these things. Because when you see these things come to pass, it's not far from the Lord to come in here. It's not far from him coming to take us home, folks. Coming in the clouds. Coming in the clouds with a shout of the archangel to gather his elect. Now, some folks call that the rapture, and it is called it is the rapture, I guess. If you want to, just the great rapture just means the great taking away. Uh, it is, you know, and it's just the big the biggest arguments around is about when and where and how. You got your pre trip, post trip, mid trip, who trip, woe trip, we trip, blah blah blah. It doesn't really matter. What it matters is if you're a saved Christian, when the Lord comes, you're being ready. Are you ready? Are you truly saved? Are you saved in your heart? Did you accept Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior? Did you wholeheartedly believe it? Because the Lord knows every hair upon your head is numbered. So he knows your heart. He knows your heart better than you do. So I pray that you meant what you said when you said it. Because there's so many out there. It's just, it's so easy to jump on this, uh, are you saved bandwagon and, and, uh, oh yeah, I want to be saved and, uh, go to the altar, go to the altar calls or whatever and not mean it and then go on to the next thing. Oh, well, okay, did that today. Check that off my list. Now let's see what's on TV. Let's see what kind of porn I can surf on the internet. Oh, that's right. I got to go out tonight and get drunk with my buddies or Oh, wait a minute, I forgot I got a date with three different women and I'm married to one of them. You know, that's the kind of thing, that's the kind of life that's going on. I put out I don't know how many articles and things on world events that's taking place, that's showing up. People 
maybe look at them, give it a look, and go on, go on to the next thing. Go play your little games. Go read your little articles, what have you. It's a shame. But that's what was going on in the times of Noah. They had not a clue, not a clue what was coming down. And the Lord said that he is going to destroy the world. Now, the next time he's going to destroy it in fire, it'll be a great fire. And it's spoke of in Revelation several different places. It, it, it's going to be a big old fire. There's the thing that a lot of people miss on the when and where's. First of all, first of all, let me go back to uh, <clears throat> Matthew and uh, basically what Matthew four uh, twenty four forty two. The Lord says, "Watch therefore, for ye know not the hour your Lord do come." So, in other words, always keep watchful. Watch for all these signs. He gives them to you. He tells you what to look for. He tells you. He tells you on back in Matthew 24 here. He tells you the things that you need to look for. The nation against nation. Uh, Matthew 24:7 says, "For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places." All of these things are the beginning of sorrows, and a lot of people mix up those sorrows for Jacob's troubles. That is not Jacob's troubles. It's the beginning of the sorrows. Because if you read on, you go on to 24.15, it says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of the Daniel prophet standing in the holy place, whosoever readeth this, let him understand. Then let them be in Judea flee to, into the mountains. You know, that is after that is after the beginning of the sorrows. The sorrows is not the is not I re, I'm gonna get rebuked for this, I'm sure. The sorrows is not the abomination of desolation. Sorrows is what we call the tribulations. Okay? And folks, we're gonna go through tribulations. We're already think about it, people. You're going through tribulations now. Yeah. But here's the thing, if you go jump over to uh Second Thessalonians uh Second Thessalonians uh chapter two verse three says Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a fall away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. We all know who that is, that's Satan. So in in what was going on there in Thessalonians, uh Paul had been out there to Thessalonica, and uh, people were starting to say this. They see, were seeing the signs and all that of, of times of their times, and they were going around saying, "Well, the Lord's coming. The Lord's coming." Well, no, he's not. He wasn't. <laughs> Obviously, that was two thousand years ago. But he was telling them, "You know, let no man deceive you. There has to become a falling away first. The great falling away, okay? An exceptional falling away. And the man of sin be revealed, son of perdition, who exalteth, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped so that he is as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, Look, folks, the last time I checked, there isn't a temple built in Israel. Oh, they're trying. Oh, my goodness, they're trying their darndest to get that temple built. But it's not built yet. So without that temple being built, there's nowhere for the man of sin to set and exalt himself. Okay? First of all. Second of all, yeah, <clears throat> there has been a lot, a, a pretty good falling away, but here's the thing. There's also a great revival going on. If you think about it, so many people are trying to find the Lord now. Now, here's the thing. Here's where the falling away, in my opinion, in my humble old country preacher opinion, is the falling away is going to come from all the new con quote-unquote converts that aren't truly converted. They jumped on a bandwagon no different than how people jump on the, the winning team, you know, everybody's favorite team changes every Super Bowl. You ever notice that? 
Everybody loves a winner. Well, they jump it on the, oh, yeah, a lot of the Redskins. Well, okay, well, next year it's the Cowboys. Next year it's the Steelers. It, you know, that's just a simple analogy, but it's a fact. And I feel that that's where the great, some of this great revival is coming. It's the, it's the what to do, who to do thing. And the prosperity preachers aren't helping. The easy believe preachers aren't helping. They are not preaching hellfire and brimstone. They are not preaching that you have, you don't, when you, once you have truly accepted the Lord, you want to do better. You want to repent. You want to turn away from your sins. And the Lord says, repent and believe and be baptized. That's the Lord's words, not my words. You look it up in your Bible. Repent and believe. First Mark, repent and believe the gospel. First Mark one fifteen, if I'm not mistaken. Look, folks, that's what you got to do. You can't, I want to be saved. Sure, we all want to be saved. But do we want to give up our sins? We have to give up our sins. We have to try to give up our sins. And the thing of it is, folks, if you love the Lord, you're truly saved and you're truly in your heart of hearts and the Lord knows it is, that feeling that comes upon you, that love that comes upon you, that happiness that comes upon you, the things you want to do that comes upon you will be for the Lord. It won't be for the devil because that's what sin is. A sin is the devil. Sin is for the devil. Sin make the devil. You make the devil smile every time you tell that lie. You make the devil smile every time you look at that porn. You make the devil smile every time you talk about your neighbor. Every time you tell a lie and talk about your neighbor, the devil's just a smile. And every time you steal whatever thing you steal, every time you you look up the wrong things on the internet, every time you get mad and get mean on the internet. Every time you overdo the internet, every time you overdo the food, every time you do that, you're making the devil happy. Because sin is what he feeds on. And he's building his sinful army. And I think that's where the great falling away is going to come from. I really do. I believe it in my heart of hearts. That's where it's going to come from. It's going to come from all these folks that said, I want to be saved. They went to the altar and next week changed their church, changed their time, changed their tune. They walked out the door and said, I'm a saved Christian. You want to go to the bar? I'm a saved Christian. Hey, how much is it for that prostitute? That's what they do. They walk straight out the door and do that. Folks, I want to tell you something I heard on the Internet, and I believe it's true. It came from a reputable preacher. Do you realize that the amount of porn purchased goes up in a city every time there's a gospel preachers convention when the preachers come into town to learn about Jesus a little more folks that ought to tell you something hadn't it that ought to tell you that we are living in Genesis 6 we are living in the time of Noah problem is is people are blinded to it and I'm hoping this helped you open your eyes up a little bit I know I got a little bit long winded and this is going to be a long video uh I'll try to throw scriptures up as I go, as we were, uh, pictures like I usually do. It's going to take me a while to get it out. I do want you all to do something for me if you're going to follow with me. I want you to start looking in your Bibles. I want you to look at Matthew 24 and read the whole thing. It's not that long, page and a half. I want you to look at Mark 13, read the whole thing. Go on into 14, Matthew 24 and 25. I want you to read the whole thing. I want you to go to Luke 21, and I want you to go to the Thessalonians and read Thess- Second Thessalonians. Really and truly, you should read First Thessalonians. It's not very long either. There's five little chapters. They're just little chapters. Three, I'm looking at my Bibles. I'm talking to you. It's uh, one, two, three and a half pages. You should read that first and then get into Second Thessalonians. And once you've read up on that, start your uh, revelations. And you might, well, you will, you'll get on the same page I am. And you may very well call me a heretic, and I don't care. You may call me Lordship Salvationist, and I don't care. <laughs> you may you, you call me all kind of things. You just don't call me late for dinner, and don't call me a, a wrong preacher, a wrongful preacher, because I'm not. I'm preaching the Lord's Word as he called me to preach it. If some of these things hit home and you're not saved and you don't feel you're truly saved, but you get down on your knees and you... Confess the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior, and you mean it, mean it from your heart, and you say that prayer to the Lord. You say whatever comes to mind to the Lord. It doesn't have to be written out a sinner's prayer. 
whatever comes to mind, and you mean that with all your heart, and you will be truly saved. You will feel the Holy Spirit anointed upon you. You will feel the power come through you, the power of the Lord, and you'll get up off your knees, and you'll be a happy person. My health, 99% of the time, I don't feel like just even making a video or talking, getting out of my chair. But the Lord brings me to do this, and that's why I'm doing it. I, I got up today and could barely move, but I'm sitting here in this chair with a headset on my making a video to tell you all about the Lord. I pray you're saved. I pray. I pray with all my heart. Lord God above, I pray these people that even listening this far as 20-some minutes are saved. I do indeed with all my heart because I love you. I love you, everyone in Christ. And I want every one of you saved. I want every one of you to go with with me to heaven. Me and my wife will meet you and shake your hand and fellowship with you in heaven. I really mean that. But we got to remember one thing, folks. we got to remember one thing. Wide is the way to destruction. Narrow is the path and the gate to salvation. And few will find it. Lord Jesus Christ said them words himself in Matthew. All right, folks. Pastor Kelly's rambled on enough or preached on enough. This is actually, you guys have actually gotten a little dose of Pastor Kelly preaching. So I love you. I, I, you know, I hope you can hear my smile on my face. I love you. I love you in Christ. But just remember, Jesus Christ loved you more. Pray for us. We'll pray for you. Pastor Kelly's out of here. <laughs>